but yeah, we have a we have a, I yeah, think we have two do. awesome callers tonight. Let's bring them in. Lost, are you with us? Hello. Lost, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Welcome back if you can hear us. Can you hear you just fine? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we had you on last week. Uh, yes. We talked about the occult. We talked about Hollywood. And a, a phrase you kept repeating that I've thought about all week, which was hagwitch. It sounds like <laughs> a bad dish that I get at, in Appalachia somewhere. Um, uh-huh. But we wanted you, 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 everyone listening really loved your storytelling and what you were going through didn't love that it happened but uh it was a great call so i know you had some other other things up your sleeve you could talk to us about and if you don't mind sharing that we'd love to hear it uh sure yeah so if, if that means we're leaving the hagwitch behind then we can go on to talk about <laughs> ghost I, shit in singapore right or, i mean or, if you want it if you had a little more hagwitch in you we could we could do a little more i, uh, I am so done with <laughs> okay yeah let's, let's move on then because what a horrible phrase <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's it's meant to be horrible because it's a horrible thing. Um, so I, I I try to be very uh, intentional in my in my phrasing, but yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I'd love to talk about um, some kind of like ghost encounters in Singapore, please, um, and and uh, in particular a experience that I had while ghost hunting out there. Yeah. Um, so first, just a, a little bit of context into kind of like spiritualism in Singapore that I think is relevant to the story that I'll, I'll dive immediately right in. Um, but yeah, so paranormal influence in, in like Singaporean culture is, is runs very deep. Um, one of the biggest annual holidays, for example, is called the Hungry Ghost Festival, where people burn these paper effigies of like everyday goods and money because they believe through transmutation and bespoken ash, these goods will be delivered to their deceased relatives in the afterlife. Mm. Um, so, and you'll also see like small familial shrines on sidewalks and street corners throughout the year. Um, but so growing up there, everyone has, or has heard stories about different ghosts and demons. Um, one of the most common would be World War II era ghosts, uh, which makes sense because there was like plenty of battles and prisoner of war camps, um, on the island in that era. Um, then the most common demon in Singaporean folklore is something called the Pontianic, which is um, it's your classic lady in white, long black hair, died during childbirth. It's mm. uh, not not exactly an uncommon demon or restless spirit kind of like archetype. Right. Um, and like a last bit, which is kind of important, is uh, it's like it's drilled in your head from when you're young that you do not look up into trees at night in Singapore. Like it's mm. believed that Pontianics and other demons dwell in the trees at night, and if you look up into them you make yourself vulnerable to demonic attacks or attachments or, or something like that so anyway context it context out of the way but like bear that in mind because it you know how my perception may have been influenced by my upbringing you know just keep that into consideration yeah um so anyway my uh, well one night my friends and i did some ghost hunting and we were going into this old abandoned turf club so we're hiding in these bushes across the street from the location we run across and climb the gate one by one. Um, my older brother goes first, and then I followed right after. I climb the gate, and I'm hiding in a bush, kind of like while we're waiting for the others to, to pop over. And while I'm crouched there, for some reason, I look up into the trees at the far side of the gate. And I saw a man, like a full-on man, sitting in the tree, staring directly into my eyes. And Whoa. he was all gray. Uh, more opaque than ghosts are typically depicted, but like I could still kind of see through them. Whoa. And um, my body, my body just immediately locked in terror, and like my arms, my eyes darted to the ground, uh, and I, I remained in this state of shock like the entire time that I was on the property. I was un- completely unable, physically unable, to lift my eyes off the ground. Uh, I had to hang on to the arm of one of my friends and have them like lead me around the whole time we were there. Um, and so now all that, like, I'm still quite skeptical of the whole thing. Um, but it was at least a real enough experience that it caused like this very real physical reaction within me, unlike anything that I'd experienced before. Did you smell anything? Like, was there any weird smell? I did not know. Um, it, it's, it, it's Singapore at night. It's like a rainforest and, and there's a lot of kind of like aroma around already anyway, between like the moisture and the flowers and all that kind of stuff. Like I so said, no, I didn't, I didn't smell any, like uh, anything that would be associated with like a, a, a demon or anything like that. 
Interesting. And uh, anything like that happen again? No, it was so. I that was one of the last times I did ghost hunting um, in Singapore, and and um, it it troubled me for a while because like I I was very skeptic, skeptical by nature, and I I this was even prior to like before I really became like a uh, went through my materialist atheism phase. Um, but you know I, I try to take stuff like that with a grain of salt because I am the only one that saw it. Right. Um, and, and temporary visual hallucinations are not uncommon. Um, but it, it, yeah, it, it for sure was at least real enough to me that, that I, to this day, I can, to this, almost 15, almost 20 years later, uh, I still have that kind of like image very, very vivid in my mind. Um, and it's, yeah, it's re remained with me ever since. Wow. When you say ghost hunting, like to what extent are you doing? Are you out there with certain devices, uh, anything like that? Well, when I was young, it was kind of glorified urban exploration. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, but this Singapore is just, it's a very, because it's a very superstitious place. Like anytime there's an abandoned anywhere, it is, it is, you hear stories of that place being haunted. Um, and so we, we did quite a few locations in Singapore, a lot of places, like there's one very infamous place called old Changi hospital. Um, this is abandoned hospital that was once a prisoner of war camp. I think even this old turf club at one point was an old prisoner of war camp. Hmm. Um, and so like you always, you always go into these locations kind of with all that kind of pretext, right. um, which can kind of like influence, um, you know, in influence your experience Absolutely. a little bit. Yeah, that's the thing I always think about with uh, going to certain places. When you know about the places and you know about their history, it definitely influences your perception. Uh, you know, like I think I said last week about going Salem. to battlefields or Salem. You can't help, but you can't divorce yourself from all that stuff that you know is a history. Uh, and then you see it and it might make you more, it might thin the veil more. You know, it doesn't mean something's not happening, but it might make you more um, like vulnerable to seeing or experiencing these weird things. Yeah, that that's also an interesting point to make about thinning the veil. That like, um, I think there is a big difference because like some of the guys that I would uh, explore and kind of investigate with were like very kind of like they don't believe in any of that stuff. And I do think that there's something to be said about um, being able to tune yourself uh, to be able to be open to perceive these certain experiences. Um, and I, I think, and I, I, you know, I haven't done enough research, I intend to, but I haven't yet to like really see the difference between people that are fully closed off and fully opened up and then people somewhat in the middle in these kind of locations. But, but I do think being open to perception, uh, certainly might have something to do with, with allowing you to perceive these sort of kind of like extra perceptual, um, phenomena. Absolutely. Were there other people in your group of ghost hunting? If you were, if you were doing it in a group that had their other experiences? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, sure. Not, not necessarily just in that, that one instance. Uh, again, like I said, I was the only person that saw that thing that night. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, which, which again, like I said, is, is why I don't put too much stock in it because it was an individual experience um, that wasn't like captured on any device or anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, sure. Plenty of stuff. Yeah, it seems like an interesting place. Like the urban exploration yeah. stuff, I see a lot of that. And it seems like it's almost too easy to trip into the uh, supernatural in those weird places. Uh, but there's something I don't know. I think there's something going on in these pla in all of these places, sure. as well as as well as like if you're like a, you're like a tuning fork, and if you're tuned for these weird things, it will find you or you will find it. So I don't doubt it. Uh, you know. Yeah, that, that's correct. And like there there certainly are pe places that are just abandoned and benign. And um, if you go in there with a group of people, you'll um, you know there, there could be an owl nearby. Or um, you know something could be settling. There could be a raccoon in there, mm -hmm. and if your if your mind is thinking ghost, then you know that could um, you could put more stock into a a, a a sound that is that is completely explainable. Um, but I mean, like with that said, when it comes to people that like either don't believe in any paranormal um, or believe everything's paranormal, like when it comes down to it, there's there's thousands of hours tens of thousands of hours and, and thousands of uh, pretty uh, good pieces of research that I've kind of like seen in my past. And either there is a 
scientifically ex- a scientific explanation for 100 percent of them hmm. or if not then there's something there and if there is something there then i think it it deserves um a little bit of reverence and a little bit of research because the implications of it are are big i agree i agree i don't uh you know i don't mock it because i even if i don't see it as much as others i think something is happening you know uh and it's it's worth it to be open to some uh, some of the strange stuff even if it makes you uncomfortable uh when you saw that uh, that figure did you tell other people did anyone ever corroborate or see something similar or have you heard anyone else say they I, saw something similar well yes yeah, so i so after like i jumped the fence i was hiding behind this i was next to my brother when i when i was hiding there mm-hmm. um and then i looked up and then yeah saw it and then like looked down and like i didn't see anything for a few seconds um, cause I was like, I, I couldn't, <laughs> but then like, I, I told my brother exactly what I saw. Um, he didn't go look up cause why would he? Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah. And then I, I told my friends as they kind of like, uh, I, I, I had to have a reason why I was looking so, so like shocked and feeble and having to like grab onto my friend. I wouldn't have done that under normal circumstances. Um, so I, I did tell them, but I, I think that night I might have been the only person that, that experienced something, but yeah. Awesome. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you uh, sharing another story with us, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. We will, um, we'll have you back yeah, for sure, because sure. I know there's more. There's always more. The, the, there's always more. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for having me again. I'm grateful for it. Uh, have a good night. Thank you. Good you night. too. Is our guest, uh, our next person here, you want to check? She's not. No, no, I mean I mean oh. on, on a Zoom. Oh, you might need a new link for that. Um, oh, I might need, oh, yeah, okay. So while we're doing this, we had someone... It was a last minute thing, and uh, you might, I don't want to give it away yet. It's okay. Uh, I'm waiting for the Zoom link, but for anyone. We might have another Discord, um, another call in. Yeah, cool. So So while I send the Zoom link to this person (laughs) who may or may not be here, we will bring in our next. And we appreciate you guys. Last week we said we need uh, callers. We've had some trouble with callers. Uh, Some people have just. for Inverted World. Yeah. Ghosted is a good word to use. Ghosted. Uh, who ghosted us last minute. So you guys came through. And I was really excited to get these stories. And we're still accepting all your submissions. You can send them to Shane Cashman at scanner.com, S-C-N-R.com. That's my, that's my email where I take all your submissions. And uh, I'll hit you guys up. And we'll, we'll bring you on. Do we have... Sounds uh, fun. Oh, we have another story? caller if you'd like right, to yeah, do let's, that. Let's bring her on. And okay, I will we'll... send... Hey, Chelsea. Hello? Hey there. Oh, hold on. Gotta fix the setting. Okay. Hello? Hey there. Hi, how are you? We are good. How are you? Good. Playing with chalk and mud. <laughs> you have kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or, I hope. or or maybe. <laughs> we don't don't be presumptuous at us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us tonight. Uh, it sounded like you had some interesting stories to share with us. Yeah. Um, so the house I grew up in was haunted. Um, I lived there from like age four to 10. Okay. And um, it was just one of those things where like everybody in the house would be in the living room hanging out. And then we'd hear the kitchen sink running and the dishes moving. And then we would, you know, go check it out and there's nothing in there. Weird. Uh, yeah. Were we, we ever so, told anything about the uh, house beforehand? Um. Uh, well, so we found out who the ghost was. So, oh. uh, one morning, my sister and I saw the ghost, but we thought it was our mom walking in the hallway. Hmm. So we we were trying to tell her, you know, good morning, mom. Hi. She just kept Ooh. walking, walked into her bedroom. Oh boy. And so we saw our mom before school, and we we're like, "Are you okay?" Like we we're saying good morning, and you didn't say anything. And of course, she was like, "I don't know what you're talking about. I've been in my room this whole time." So um, she sleepwalked. We went. <laughs> no, so we went to school, and when we came back, my mom had a photo album out, and she turned right to this picture, and it was a lady with hair just like my mom. What? And um, and we we're like, okay, well, that must have been her. Like, what's up with this woman? Right. And um, my mom said that she used to date our stepdad. And, um, sorry, I'm walking outside. Oh, good. Um, so she said that, you know, he wanted to marry this woman, but she never would. 
And so she finally tells him why. And she's like, you know, I'm going to die in a car crash. And like three months later, she did. Oh, what? Yeah. So we figured, you know, she just hung around and like, they check on the kids and stuff. Like, so nothing bad ever happened. We just hated the hallway in the bathroom. (laughs) Wow. That is wild. Uh, That's crazy that she just had the picture to show you too. Like it's confirmation of what you saw. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then um, the next, like, super crazy story was we also had confirmation. Um, give me just a second. Yeah, of course. I'm trying I like, to figure out where I can hear you guys better. I like that we're wondering multitasking. You. I know. So am I. I'm, like, <laughs> doing 10 things. <laughs> it's okay. And someone's like, asking, like, if there's effects on her voice. It's probably just... The no. Discord. Because she sounds perfect to me. Yeah. It could just be oh. the output. Yeah. Or, it's the mic. Um, so my oldest daughter, when she's like two or three, she could always talk like really well, like, you know, like as well as a five-year-old. Hmm. So um, I take her over to my cousin's house to hang out. And when I go, you know, to pick her up later, oh, hold on. Uh, when I go to pick her up later, um, you know, we're taking the bus back home and she starts telling me her um uncle was like bleeding from his head and you know he had glowing red eyes and it was kind of freaking her out and i'm like wait wow. your uncle's fine i'm like what are you talking about so i had to like kind of you know um try to like give her the words to say and i was trying to ask her like you know questions Uh-oh. we're losing you we lost you chelsea her Okay, we lost you for a so second. If you could, me, if you could like, repeat the last uh, like the ten whole, words, sorry. Oh, oh, oh can you Uh-oh. hear me? Uh-oh. The gremlins are back. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? The ghost is uh, yeah, you're, you're cutting about out. You're cutting oh. out a little bit. Oh. The ghost is like, don't talk about me. 